Today we're going to do a 30 minute no lunge dumbbell leg workout. You can do this as a follow along with me. I'm going to be using 17 and a half kilos, that's about 38 pounds each, but just make do with what's right for you and what you've got. First up though, let's start this off with a quick bodyweight warm up. This warm up consists of four 30 second intervals for two rounds. There's going to be no break in between each exercise. We'll link them straight from one to the other, starting nice and simple with a bodyweight squat. So if you start with your feet about shoulder width apart, slight turn out to the toes. Let's go. So squatting down, knees out, and then back up. This routine is going to be nice and easy for the knees, but still a great leg workout. Get full depth, push the knees out. You want your knee angle to match your toe angle. So if the feet are turned out a lot, which is okay, you need to turn your knees out to match. If you've got relatively straight feet, your knees can be relatively straight. Okay, hands behind your head. We need to hinge at the hip and then scoot back through. It's called a good morning. It's more of a hinge action, not a squat action. Although you can unlock the knees, you shouldn't be bending your legs too much. Imagine someone's pulling your hips back, folding you in half, whilst maintaining good upper back posture. Shift all the way onto your left leg. Let's go for a single leg. Romanian deadlift. I'm gonna go for a little knee tuck as well. We're gonna stay on this side. Don't worry if you're wobbling around for 30 seconds and then we'll switch straight to the other side. Again, we're trying to keep a relatively straight supporting leg, maybe with just a soft unlock of the knee, but a fixed angle. All right, switch to the other side. A good tip for not twisting your hips to the side is to try and keep the back toe pointing down towards the floor and it'll stop you from opening out that hip, taking the stretch off the hamstring if you did that. So we want to keep it on the hamstring, toe pointing down. We're going to link this straight back into those squats for the second round. So knees out. Nice low squat without too much or any tucking of the tailbone as it comes under. Arms out for a little bit of gentle counterbalance. Push your knees out nice and wide. So we've got this good squat position at the bottom. Upright torso. Straight to those good mornings. So hands behind the ears, hinge at the hip. Scoot through. Imagine your hips are being pulled backwards. You're folding at the hip without collapsing the upper back. Keep going until you feel the hamstrings stop you. Your feet should be a bit narrower than your squat and you don't really need to turn them out for this. Okay, single leg Romanian deadlift. Staying on one side, adding that knee tuck if you can. Don't worry if you're wobbling, it's all practice on this. Try not to send the body too far. People tend to send the body too far and the leg not high enough. We actually want the body here, the back heel a bit higher like that. Okay, straight to the other side. Little wobble. Great job, so we've got the body moving. Now we need to get into the main workout. So the first exercise is a classic. You're just gonna need one of your dumbbells. We're gonna go for a goblet squat. In this first of two strength sections, we've got four exercises, 40 seconds on, 20 seconds off for three rounds. 
You can just follow along with me. I'll give you technique tips throughout. We'll have a little break in the middle and then we'll move to four new exercises. So for this goblet squat, dumbbell nice and close to your body. Very upright squat position, focusing on the quads. So slow tempo down, knees out, same back up. Just like in the warm up. So I'm thinking three to four counts down and then one to two on the way up. So one, two, three, four, one, two. And then trying to go straight into the next rep with minimal rest at the top. Great job. Just a quick 20 seconds off now. We're gonna go for a split leg Romanian deadlift. So you just need one dumbbell. I'm gonna take the dumbbell in my right hand. I'm gonna put my left foot forward, right foot back, bend the back knee, hinge at the hip, keep the front leg straight. Don't worry if you haven't quite got it, you'll get the hang of it. So hinging, reaching down. So my front leg, my left leg is gonna be straight. My back leg is gonna bend. I've got the dumbbell in my right hand. I'm scooting the hips back, feeling a nice stretch in the hamstring of that front left leg, keeping my upper back engaged so I'm not slouching forwards. Great job. Okay, so we're gonna take it to the other side. So split your stance the other way. So I'm gonna have the dumbbell in my left hand. My left leg, the back leg is gonna bend. The front leg's gonna stay pretty much straight. So if you pick your dumbbell up in your left hand, push the hips back, straighten the front leg, bend the back leg, back up, hinging at the hip. Feeling that stretch down the front straighter leg. A lot of the time I see people split their legs too far front to back. This is not a split squat. We don't want your back leg to be too far away. I'd say my toes are only about eight or nine inches behind my heel of my front foot, my back foot toes. Great job. Okay, this whole first section actually, we only need one dumbbell. If you find this next one easy with one, you could do two, but I'm just gonna use one for now. So my dumbbell's relatively heavy. We're gonna go nice and wide with the stance, it's called a sumo stance. Toes turned out, grab the dumbbell. Okay, we're gonna hinge at the hip and squat slightly. We're doing a sumo deadlift. So it's a mix. You're gonna hinge at the hip, but you're also gonna bend at the leg. We've got this deadlift action, this nice wide stance, emphasizing the glutes and hitting the upper hamstrings as well. The back's probably gonna meet about a 45 degree angle in the base position and then come up right at the top. You could hold one dumbbell in each hand if you want slightly heavier weight. Great job. So there's one round done, two more to go of those four exercises and then we'll be moving to four new exercises in the second half of this strength workout. Grab a bit of water, rest up, get ready to go for those goblet squats for round two. floor, knees pushed out, upright posture, nice low depth to your squats.
onto that split leg Romanian deadlift. So we're gonna start left foot out front, back foot with the toes about eight, nine inches behind that front heel. Pick your dumbbell up in your right hand. Pull the hips back. You're gonna bend that right knee, straighten the left, scooting through. Push the hips back. Almost straight front leg. You can unlock the knee on the front leg, but it should be pretty much straight. Back knee though, needs to bend. Maintain good upper back posture. Finish your rep, don't worry too much about the timer. So I'm gonna go left foot back, right foot out front. So we're gonna be bending the left leg. I'm gonna have the dumbbell in my left hand, straightening the front leg. Well done. On to the sumo deadlift now. So, got that nice wide sumo stance. Toes turned out at like about 45 degrees to one another. You've got to push the knees out to match that toe angle. Holding one dumbbell in the center. Hinge, squat slightly, and then stand through. Two down, just one to go, and then we'll be giving you some new exercises. Back to the goblet squats. to the split leg RDLs for the final time. So left foot forwards, right foot back. I'm gonna hold the dumbbell in my right hand, pushing my hips back, hinging, feeling that stretch down the front left side.
switch into the other side. So I'm gonna have the right foot forwards, left leg back, dumbbells gonna be in this left hand. Not too big front to back split the legs. Final exercise of these four. We're gonna do those sumo deadlifts, one dumbbell. So get that wide stance, toes out. I'm gonna stretch down these adductors by keeping the knees wide as well. Well done. Got a minute off now. I'm gonna use the same dumbbells for the next section. I'm gonna do four new exercises, same format, 40 20 for three rounds. If you want to take your training to a new level, consider joining my TPT virtual studio. This members area gives you exclusive access to an extensive follow along video library not available on YouTube. It also includes written workout plans you can do at your own pace, taking the guesswork out of training and optimizing your results. Learn to fuel your body for success with nutrition resources from meal plans to dietary strategies that work. Save yourself from expensive gym memberships, long travel times and average results by joining the virtual studio. To check it out, follow the link in this video's description after your workout. So the first exercise is that deadlift. So feet quite narrow, maybe hip width apart or slightly closer. I'm gonna push the hips back. When the dumbbells come about level with the knees, you're gonna bend the knees, press through, back to the top. So we've got a dumbbell deadlift. It is a hip hinge, but there's still a knee bend towards the bottom half of the movement. Try not to round your lower back. Lying on your back now. You just need one dumbbell. I'm gonna put it on the hips. We're gonna do a glute bridge. We're gonna be holding for three seconds at the top of every rep and only coming down for a brief moment in between reps. So up, squeeze and hold for three, two, one, down, straight back up. Three, two, one and repeat. Drive off the heels, squeeze your glutes together, flatten your ribs down. So tense your glutes, slight pelvic tilt as you flatten the abs out, pushing through the heels, tensing the glutes hard at the top of every rep, not just lifting the hips, actively engage those glutes. Great job, okay. Trying to cover all the legs, so we're gonna hit a little bit of calves now. I'm gonna take both dumbbells, I'm gonna come right up onto the tiptoes. So up, little squeeze, down, 
trying to minimize any time in contact with the floor, with the heels. So I'm holding at the top for a moment, but then hot potato, your heels back off the floor, maximizing the time under tension. Exaggerate those pauses at the top, minimize those rests at the bottom. Next up, if you've got dumbbells where it's okay for you to stand on the handles, do that. If not, you can just do a narrow foot squat. We're gonna do a cyclist squat, so I'm gonna put my heels on the handle of my dumbbells. You could also use some little weight plates or even a book if you're at home. Just squat down, nice upright posture, back up. So it's called a cyclist squat because it works your VMO, which is one of your quad muscles on the inside here is important for cycling, producing power. It's different to a regular squat because you're gonna have more upright posture. You should be able to go a bit lower because of that heel elevation. And we've got a slightly narrower stance than your regular squat. But this VMO is really important for supporting that kneecap and for good knee health. And as many of you have opted for this work out because there's no lunges in it. Strengthening those knees is gonna be really important. So remember your VMO muscle, this one here, this teardrop muscle at the front of your quad, really important for that knee health. Okay, let's get ready for those double dumbbell deadlifts. The dumbbells don't have to touch the floor. If it means rounding your back, we actually don't want them to go to the floor. Obviously, if you can get there with a nice flat back, great, but it's not necessary if you haven't got the mobility for it. So that glute bridge. If you've got a bench, feel free to do this glute bridge on the bench. You get a bit of a bigger range of motion on a bench. But if not, just do it on the floor with me. So up, hold for three. Down very briefly, straight back into that next rep. At the top of every rep, tense your glutes together hard. Drop your ribs down, flattening your abs out. Imagine you're tucking your tailbone under, tilting your pelvis. If you've got a plate and you want a bigger range of motion on your calf raises, you could put that down. Put your toes on the plate. It's gonna give us a little bit bigger stretch in between reps, if you've got the balance for it. Add those pauses at the top. Definitely feeling it a bit more with that heel elevation. So if you have got, sorry, that toe elevation for the calf raises. So if you have got something you can do that with, that'd be great. 
Onto the cyclist squat, so heels elevated for this. Nice upright squat. As I said, if you can't stand on the handles of your dumbbells or if you haven't got any plates, just do a body weight close foot squat. You don't have to elevate the heels, but you'll probably get a better range of motion, a better quad stretch, and therefore a better workout in your quads if you can. Okay, two down, one to go, and that's the workout complete. onto the floor for those glute bridges. Remember, if you've got a bench and you want to put your upper back pivoting on the bench, that's fine as well. We're going to use that toe elevation again for the calf raises to give me that extra stretch. I'm trying to pause at the top, control the way down, and minimize any time at the bottom. Okay, finishing the whole workout with these cyclist squats. So elevate your heels if you can. Control the way down. A little bit faster, smoother tempo on the way up. And that's it, 
workout complete. Thanks so much for joining me. Let me know in the comments below, how did you find that workout? And where in the world are you following along from? I truly do love to hear it. Uh, if you want to try a quick cool down stretch, I'll link one here. Make sure you check out that members area. I'll give you a little promo video here. See you again soon.